Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and this is going to be the second wet and smart home product that I reviewed. I did a sneak preview of this a couple of weeks ago and this is a Wi-Fi smart switch. As you can see it has two gangs. It is the usual touch uh, sensor type and maybe you can notice by the color of the wires here that there is only black wires going in because this is a single live wire or no neutral wire switch. So I recommend using this if you are planning to replace your old light switches in a house where there is no neutral wire in your switch box or in the, you know, the socket uh, behind your switch because, well, it doesn't require neutral wire. So this is the ideal replacement for, let's say, older homes. And as I said, this works on Wi-Fi and it works with the Tuya Smart or the Smart Life app. A couple of things about this uh, switch. Um, actually, I'm going to review this switch and a, this uh, RF switch as well. So if you want two switches, if you want two-way or three-way switches, what you can do with this particular device, you can install the regular Wi-Fi switch in one of the location, and that's going to control your lights here. And then for the second switch, you can use these uh, battery-operated ones, which you can just you know stick on the wall with some double-sided tape or use the screw holes. And you can pair these switches with the main you know, Wi-Fi switch, and actually you can pair multiple RF switches to one single Wi-Fi switch, or you can also pair the RF switch to multiple Wi-Fi switches. So, you know, whatever application you need, you would be able to, you know, do these with these type of switches. And then, of course, when you pair them together, it will automatically be like a two-way or a three-way or a five-way switches, because you can pair up to 15 of these to a single Wi-Fi switch. And let me also just have a quick look around these devices. Both of them are uh, pretty much the same thing. So this is a European model, so you can see the square size, but there is a US model also available, which is more like the US version, and you can get white and black and one gang, two gang and three gang versions. And uh, again, very fairly uh, typical construction. So you have this, uh, I would say glass, but this is probably some sort of acrylic uh, on the front. Um, I just have this protective film, which I haven't removed yet. And you have the two circles, which uh, show you where you need to touch the operated. And um, the on the Wi-Fi version, there is a <clears throat> there is also illumination behind these circles. So it's blue illumination when the, it is turned off and it's red when it's turned on. But it's really, really faint, so it will only be visible in the evening. And for the RF one, you don't get any illumination because, well, this, run, this runs on batteries. So you all get a short um, blue, sorry, a short red flash when you are pressing it. So you get some sort of feedback. And in terms of the switch, you have these... Um, uh, recess holes and then you just put a screwdriver and then you can pry off the back and that's how you can access these screw mounts and there are some two CR2032 batteries so two coin cells which operate this uh, RF button and the construction is very similar to the, R uh, the Wi-Fi version so again you have some screw mounts uh, sorry these recess holes here so you can pop off the front fascia and you have access to the screw holes which are here in the back and that's how you mount it on the wall and it just slides into the wall socket since we are looking at the you know the the product and the box let me just cover the unboxing part so the whole thing comes in a fairly generic uh, box and then you can see the various versions that are supported so this is the rf and the wi-fi version and the two gang version and Y. so you can have black and one two three gangs as well so this bluetooth and the four gang and the other two colors don't apply i guess this is just a generic box which is used in for many different products but as you can see there's no branding there's nothing on here so in the box you get there is actually another uh, protective film so it comes in uh, that's how it is packaged so it gives additional protection on top of the film which is on the acrylic and there is a very you know a single page it's like a credit card size or a business card size documentation so it just contains the basics and the wiring and you know how you do the app registration and the pairing and yeah but it's it's you know it's fairly uh, generic i think 
it says uh, here free, uh, Zigbee and 433 megahertz. I think this, this leaflet is probably from the Zigbee version, but again, it is the same for the Wi-Fi version as well. And if you have seen my Zigbee video, you will find that pretty much the rest of the video is going to be exactly the same because it behaves the same way, it works the same way, and it's even wired the same way as the Zigbee bridge, as the Zigbee version. This just uses Wi-Fi instead of Zigbee. And this is the box the RF button comes in. So again, uh, separate protective film and you are not getting batteries with it. So you just have to provide your CR2032 batteries, which are quite common. So you should be able to get it pretty much anywhere. Let's just cover the wiring now. I'm going to move the RS button to the side because we don't need that. And if I flip it over, you can see that we only have terminals which are marked as L, so live. So on here, the leftmost one, uh, sorry, the rightmost one, this is uh, which says L. This is the uh, live that comes in from your fuse box. Uh, so you can see the black wire here. And then we have the, the outgoing gangs, L1, N2, and L3. And of course, depending on your model, you would have only one or two or all three of them populated. So you just screw in the, the wires that are going to your lamps to these L1, L2, and L3 terminals. And because it is a single live wire version or no neutral wire version, you also need this yellow capacitor and you just wire them across your lamp like this. So across the two terminals of your lamp. And that's pretty much it. And of course, the other side of your lamp, the blue ones are the neutral wire, which um, I just connected them together and it goes to the, well, that goes to the neutral connection. So here I'm just going to power this from the pigtail. So you can see the black and the, the neutral wire. So this is the black and the blue wire. And because I haven't covered the pairing of the RF switch, the main switch, let me just do that now. So if you, again, long press any of the outputs until you hear the beep, then you can select the button and then your device is going to, or the RF button is going to be linked to that output. So now you can operate it using the RF button as well. And if I do the same for the other one as well, I just press and hold. And now it is linked to the, the main button. And as I said, you can, multi, you can link up to 15 of these to a single switch, and you can link the single RF switch to multiple Wi-Fi switches as well. I just recommend you to do the RF pairing before you do the Wi-Fi pairing because it uses the same button and the beep combination. So if you do it with the Wi-Fi then, uh, and then you do the RF pairing, then it's going to forget the Wi-Fi and you just need to set up the Wi-Fi again. It's a little bit silly, but since you only have to do it once, uh, I don't think it's a big issue. Okay, so I connected the unit up and it's plugged in at the moment. So you can see that I can operate both of the outputs. Um, it looks like that they are via the wrong way around. And now this device is ready for pairing. So what I need to do is I need to get this device into pairing mode. And I just want to reiterate that it is important that the capacitor is connected to the light, which is on the L1 output. So I had it the wrong way around and it wasn't working. So I was just assuming that it can be connected to any of the outputs. Mm -hmm. So according to the documentation, I have to long press on the first input until it beeps. Uh, and now I can pair the device with it to your hub. So I click on plus, I select Wi-Fi switch, I confirm my credentials and I just uh, click on next and now wait until this device is added to my two year account. And here we go. So, and I can just rename this. And I'm just going to give it a name. Oops, sorry, wrong button and do all. Okay, save. Uh, let me put it into the living room. Okay. And now we have the device uh, already here, so I can operate the outputs uh, from my smartphone. If I long press any of these switches, as you can see from the hint, you can change the name of these. So instead of switch one and switch two, you can rename it to something else. And we have two additional buttons. We have uh, well, for operating the switch, we have all on and all off. They are on the lower part of the screen. 
And besides these, we can set up timers. So as I said, it's going to be pretty much the same what we have seen for the uh, Zigbee version. So I can, you know, select or set a timer to let's say switch one that at uh, 11.45, I want this switch to turn on every Monday and yeah, switch one is on. So now I created a schedule that on Mondays 11.45, the switch one will always turn on. You can have multiple of these uh, settings uh, created for, and also there is, uh, you can do that separately for the other switch as well. And you also have these countdowns, which is like a manual sleep timer kind of function. So for example, if I turn switch two on, go to the countdowns and I select, let's say at five minutes, oh, sorry, after five minutes, I want this uh, output to turn off. So now we just have to wait for five minutes and this output is going to turn off. And of course I can turn it off manually as well. If we go into the settings, you're not going to see an awful lot. So we have the icon and the name and the location of the switch that we can change. And we can also share the device. So you can share with other users if you want to give control to them. And you also have this multi-control association. So if you have multiple of these Wi-Fi switches, you can just link them together. So if you turn one of them on, then the others would also come on. But because we also have these RF switches for this, I think probably it would be easier just to use the RF switches, which once you link to the main device, then, well, that's like a multi-control uh, linkage already. So you don't have to do this separately in the app because then your RF button is going to be linked to your main switch anyway. And that's pretty much it. The only thing left for us to discuss is what we can do in automation because that's also an important thing when it comes to smart homes. So let's see what events are supported by this device. So if I create a new automation, I can select when the device status changes and the VET and dual. And as you can see, you can create an automation that triggers whenever either uh, switch one or switch two is either getting turned on or turned off. And that can be, you know, via the app, via the physical button or via the RF button as well. So you can create an automation based on that and that automation will trigger when that happens. Also, similarly, what we can do on the other side. So if my automation triggers by another device or let's say tap to launch. So if I manually triggered it, we can ask this device to do something. So run device, ZN Dual, and I can, you know, either turn switch one uh, on or off or reverse its current state. So if it was on, it turns off and the other way around. And I can do that separately for switch one and switch two. And to be honest, I always get these countdowns, but I don't really understand the use of the countdown because you can also create a delay here as part of the uh, uh, task. So I just usually use that. So if I want something to happen with a delay, I can add a delay first, let's say one minute, and then I can add another task, which let's say run device and then switches off both of the outputs like that. So with this, what happens is that if I click on this automation, tap to run, then it just waits for a minute and then it's going to turn both outputs off. So like, you know, like uh, you, you leave the house, you have this uh, automation that you create, you click on this button that I'm leaving the house and your lights will automatically go off after a minute. So this is a simple automation that you can do. And this concludes my review of this uh, Vatan uh, Wi-Fi smart switch for the Tuya ecosystem. If you are interested in this product or the Wi-Fi button, you will find the purchasing links in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.